Well, I found myself out here in uh, Niles Canyon, beautiful historic Niles Canyon. And it's pretty cool to think this is where Charlie Chaplin started it all. Uh, well, almost. I'm involved with the Niles Esme Silent Film Museum, which is uh, has screenings in a Nickelodeon era theater every Saturday night. Uh, the doors open at 7, and by 7.30 there are shows that are all silent films accompanied by pianists who are good at accompanying the silent films. Because it, although they were called silent films, and they didn't talk, uh, they were never silent because there was always musicians who played to accompany the films. So we've carried on that tradition, and. Uh, we started that in the year 2005. And so I moved up here at that time and we're still doing it every, you know, every uh, week. The museum itself is open uh, on the weekends between 12 and four it, it, on Saturday and Sunday and our tours are given. There's a wonderful store that's all related to, you know, historical film things mostly. And then there's an exhibit area, and you can also visit the theater. Charlie Chaplin worked here in Niles for several months uh, for the SNA company. And in fact, his most famous early film called The Tramp, where he walks away from the camera and where he's walking back toward the camera. Uh, at the beginning of the film, he's coming toward the camera. Uh, at the end of the film, he's, it hasn't worked out and he's walking away from the camera. And that was shot up in Niles Canyon, which is just 1.8 miles away up here north. Okay, my interest in old film began when I was a little kid, watching Saturday morning cartoons like we're showing in our theater right now. Um, because a lot of these cartoons were made in the 30s and 40s for theaters. And that's what they showed on Saturday mornings. And a lot of these cartoons had animated caricatures of the stars of the time. So that was kind of my first introduction to what to the stars, even though I had no idea who they were. It wasn't until later that I found out what they really looked like. This is a room that uh, was original to the theater as well, because on the left and right from the entrance to this building, were two different businesses as well as two apartments that were up immediately up above us. So it was built in 1913 with all this capability of having two businesses and people living upstairs. And then everything that's in this room that's behind me and off to my side, everything dates from the silent era because we want to keep that legacy alive is the uh, days that films were silent, but as uh, you could have seen, there were two pianos that we had as well. So the films weren't silent, they all had accompaniment. Yeah, boy, talk about a step back in time. This is unbelievable. So the booth itself is over 100 years old. Um, so you can see like the tin lining and whatnot and the uh, spit in box, if you can believe it. I didn't write it, but somebody, you know, 100 years ago did. Presumably because of chewing tobacco. This is our spit in box thing, which was written at the time this theater was being run. And the reason was that no one was allowed to smoke cigarettes or cigars. They had to chew tobacco to work in that place where film is so flammable. And so in the trade periodicals of the time, uh, they, they would report all these file fires. And so more and more cities began to have their zoning laws mm -hmm. where if you had a, a theater, you could show the nitrate film. Now you can't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, today in the US, you can't show nitrate film unless you have a certain uh, 
rules. I think there are there are six theaters in the U.S. that can show nitrate. It's the the, the Egyptian can, uh, the Stanford the theater. Stanford. Can. Stanford. Really? Uh, yeah, oh, okay. But yeah. um, Pacific uh, Film Archive. Can they? Can I? I don't know. I'm not sure can. if um, they can. Uh, George, George Eastman House, obviously. Yeah. Um, a couple other places. The Academy of yeah. Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's what. Did you own? Yeah. But I think the the whole yeah, I don't think the New Beverly and the Vista both can. So that's. Uh, I don't think they're trying to, but uh, that I'm aware of. They can. Yeah, most people uh, who own theaters don't want to show night. <laughs> right, yeah. The ports that you see, like the cutouts here, um, are all original uh, that I'm aware of. Um, you can actually see over here, like this would have had um, what, like a big metal thing that kind of came down to shut it off had there been a fire here, you know, 100 years ago, to essentially lock the fire into the booth so that people could safely get out. The R35 millimeter. If you see this contraption here, we actually project through a series of mirrors. Um, so it's through here. So it'll project here to here to out here. Um, and we do that again because we want to keep the original ports and the height of this projector is just slightly higher. And we also don't want to dig into the ground. So our museum president came up with this interesting contraption <laughs> of, of uh, going through a, a, a mirror in that way. Um, many times when I'm projecting in here, I will think about somebody a hundred years ago was standing here and they were projecting films too. Yeah, that's you know, great. That's pretty, yeah. you know. The projectors we use today are not, you know, vintage to the time yeah. the theater was around, but they're still over 60 years old. Um, they come from the mid sixties here. I think these also either come from the early seventies or the, or the late sixties. Um, so, you know, we're still talking about vintage stuff um so we have yeah twin 16 and then twin 35 um we can also do digital stuff but you know we try to stay yeah. and so occasionally we can still use this for a show and it resides up here and you can see it probably needs to be cranking it faster than that but you know there it is for demonstration sometimes if i'm just hanging out here i'll you know go around a little bit it's amazing uh, how really fairly quiet it is. Unbelievable, it is, yeah. 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 When you think about it, so, uh, and our film historian, David Keene, is, uh, I think, the one that restored this and was able to make it uh, functioning just probably as good as it did when it first came out. Yeah, or worked for myself. I don't know how you do it, though. Really? That could be like a magician as far as I'm concerned. I... <laughs> so we hand rewind everything here. Um, probably most places you would see some sort of machine doing it, but here we do it by hand because most of the prints that we're handling are pretty old, and so it's just best a little to, safer than that. Um, yeah, to do it all by hand. So if there's a snag or something, you know, you can. It's a lot easier than trying to turn off a machine. Yeah, I love this little stairwell. Niles wanted to establish a really nice park. Uh, we decided to bring the depot back from Mission back to N Niles. And although it faced the tracks, uh, the only thing that we did was to face it so it now faces the town of Niles. Uh, and then the freight building was moved from the street a little further back. There are also on selected uh, Saturdays and Sundays, trains that run, antique trains, that run between Niles and Sanol, and Sanol and Niles. And it's an, an incredible experience. And usually there will be a Charlie Chaplin, the person that's impersonating Charlie Chaplin, because to many people, Charlie Chaplin still lives. His spirit is still here in Niles. As a small child, I had decided I wanted to build a museum about the silent film in Kansas. And uh, I was never able to do that. So in a way, by having a museum here in Niles was almost playing out a childhood memory. And so I, I love it here in Niles. I've lived here since 2005.
And it's really a, a unique place. The history lives. When you come to Niles, you'll feel it. It's all over the place. And there's no greater place to have history than here in Niles. So someday we'll have to come back here and film a movie. It's a great place here. Small little town tucked against the foothills there. Uh, very nice place. Great film location. <laughs> Thank you.